very simple report with contact name, account name, and um, their phone numbers and email addresses. Go ahead and create a report, please. Uh, did everybody understand the question? So I need a report with account, a con a contact name, account name, phone number, and email. Okay, go ahead and do that. Uh, Josna, have you done reports before? Yeah. Okay, so then you're comfortable creating a report. You need to create a report with account name and. Okay, I need a report with contact name, account name, phone number, and email. Just like you see on my screen, but in a report. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes and we will get rolling. Shobha, did you talk to Sirisha recently? No, Tosu. Okay, she didn't contact you either? No. Okay. All right, but I've been sending. He's not finding time. Okay, okay, yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Contacts, account, each phone number, and email in a report. First name, last name, account name, phone, and email? Looks like this. Okay. All right, and good, Kevin. Uh, what I need on this now is for the accounts, I need their industry. Okay. All right, what else is done? Okay, did you add industry of the account? Okay, go ahead and do that. If you are done, whatever you're done, just send a snapshot to the team and do it, come on. Hmm. Account has a field called industry. I want that information. First name, last name, account name, industry, phone, and email. Yeah.
All right, guys, are you done? Okay, let me share. Okay, so this is what we want to do. So what I'm going to do is I go to reports. Okay, show by is also done. Suzanne, are you done? So what I can do is I can create a new report. Now I wanted a report. So what is the basic element of the report? What's the most important piece for the report? This report is about what? Industry, account or contact? It's about contact, right? I said for all contacts, I want to get their accounts and their industries, right? Apart from phone number. So this is, it starts with an account and it is, its record type is account, contacts and accounts. Okay, so make sure you select the correct record type. Did everybody choose contacts and accounts as a record type? Yeah, and then select yes. And then if you go to fields, you can actually see what are all the data points that are available. Okay, as you can see here, there's the information about the custom custom fields but there's information about the contacts and the accounts, right? So what we want to do is we want to get first name, last name. Okay, Kevin, if you're done with that, try to combine first name and last name into a single field. Okay, I've been on YouTube. Everybody who's done, try to do that. And then I don't need the address, but I do need the industry of the account and the phone number and email address. So what I do is I can search for fields here and I can search for industry. I can add it here. Okay, and I need the account name. I, I move the account name here, right? So this is easy enough. And then when I go to filters, I can either see my contacts or all contacts. I want to make sure everybody makes the correct choice. So if you want to show all contacts, that's totally fine. And then created could be all time. That means it will show forever. Did everybody make changes to their filters? All right, guys, I want to make sure you cleared the filters by selecting all and all. Okay, and then this is a preview. You can turn off the preview if you don't want it, but turning it on is a good idea. Then you can see, you don't see all the records. That's what it's saying here. All right, Jyotna, are you able to do this so far? You good? Suzanne? Yeah, I was able to create a report. Okay, Jyotna? Yeah, I'm doing. Okay, good. All right, and then click on run. That was a preview, so I have 27 records. I have all the information I need, right? Now, what I also want to do is, let me go to sales here. Now, you can save your report, right? Right now, if you go to edit, Guys, look here. If you click on edit, you can give it a name. Yeah, go ahead, Suzanne. What were you saying? I can't see. You can't see the screen. Oh, you cannot see the screen. Okay, okay. Thank you for letting me know. All right. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay, so I have the basic information. The, when you click on edit, you can click on the pencil here and give it a name, right? So I can say contacts with account info, right? So I can select this and I saved it. I can click on save. It will ask me a unique name. So you can just copy paste. It will put some underscores on its own or if you just press tab, it will create it, okay? All right. And you can even put it in a private folder or you can select a common folder. So you can create a brand new folder and say, these are the contact reports for sales people, right? So that could be your unique name. So you can put it in a common folder too. You select that folder and save. Okay, did everybody save their reports? So you know where your report is saved, then you can control access to the report and the folder and all that. Okay, so. I found the option to combine first and last name. I'm wondering where to add a space. Okay, 
So how would you do that? How did you combine them? There's a, a row level formula. Yeah. That I found under columns. Um, so yeah, we could do this here. You can add a row level formula. And then in your formula, what you're basically doing is you're creating a new field. So yeah. alpha is full name. Full name. Full name Outputs a text. Output is text. So let me change the label. How many of you are following along? And then what I want to do is I'm a, so my question to Kevin was, OK, hey, I want to combine first name and last name. So we want to concatenate. So let's see. Um, this is text. Let me put a plus sign and I'll just add a space. Let's see if it uh, picks up the space. Otherwise, we can use the form. Did you find a function called concatenate for text, Kevin? Or did you just use the plus sign? I just have a plus and it just puts the names together with no space. Okay, even with this. I haven't tried that. I'm not sure if that'll work. Okay, so you can validate and it will say it, there's no parameter. So what I can do is I can maybe add an underscore or yeah, they can try are those quotation way. marks or quotation marks with a space between them. Yeah, see here, I have Gina Johnson. Oh, okay. All right, how many of you understood what I just did? And it tells you that it's a formula field. Huh? Did you validate it? You have to run it. For it, uh, you can run it. Okay. What what happened? See, if you want to fig if you want to make changes to it, just double click or click on it. It will tell you what it is. So this is the formula I use. Okay. At the end, you can click on validate, and it does the validation for you. And you can use this for you know. Calculating percentages, you can do whole, whole you know, a lot of uh, manipulations right there for the, okay, using your formula field. Okay, did everybody get the formula? So this is, a, there's a space between the double quotes. Okay, now I have Gina Johnson became Gina space Johnson. Okay, all right, so now, let me save this report. I want to go in here. So the other thing I want to know is if these contacts were involved in a case. I want to get the case information. Case. So if they were involved in a case, right? So uh, uh, when we did uh, services, um, so it's, I don't remember if you're there. So okay, if we if we don't want to use cases, that's totally fine. We can use. Uh, you have worked with opportunities and campaigns, right? So what I want to know is I want to get a list of opportunities and campaigns that this uh, person is associated with. Okay, so I can search for opportunities. I don't see anything. Or if I'm searching for campaigns, again, I don't see that information. Okay, I can search for all fields and check if there's any opportunity or campaign information, there's nothing. So if I want to get a list of not only their first name, last name, right? And after I concatenated, I don't need these fields anymore, okay? It would still preserve the information. And if I ever want to go in and add a middle name, I can do that. There's no middle name. 
if there's no middle name field on the object, it's not visible here, right? That's a good point. Okay, so now, okay, now I have my first name. I want to call this first name, let's say contact full name. Okay, so that is clear whose full name it is, right? I can simply change the column name. Okay, now I have phone number, email, uh, and everything. Now the phone number also, what I can do is, let me see if I can go in here. Uh, I can rename, maybe not here. Uh, let me sort it. Okay, I'll take a look at the renaming part. All right, so for now, let's go to, uh, okay, so what I want to un add here is I want to add um, email, phone number, account, industry. I want to add campaigns. And what was the other thing I wanted to add? Opportunity. Okay. Opportunity. Yeah. Okay. So uh, campaigns and opportunity. Let's start with campaigns and then once you figure out how to add campaigns. Okay. Does anybody have any suggestions on how to do that? Um, cross filter. Mm -hmm. Cross filter. You could try. Uh, but how would that work? Campaigns. So. Campaign is a separate object, right? Campaign is related to contacts, account is related to contacts, but campaigns and accounts may not be related. So I'm not seeing that information right here. So there's a concept called custom record type. See, this one is a record type. When I click on new report, right? So for example, if I close it, if I say save and close, can everybody save and close? And if you click on a new report, what you see here, these are all the record types. Right. I am interested in record types that have not only accounts and contacts, but also have campaigns. So if I search for campaign here, I don't have any campaign is its own thing, but the campaign has opportunities, uh, but campaign has contacts, but it doesn't have accounts. You see this? So we are missing something from the standard report types, but that doesn't mean we cannot do it. We'll create our own report type. OK, so that's a custom report. We, we create a report type that will pull data from multiple objects. OK, so what do you, what I would do is go to setup and search for report type. OK, keep your reporting module open, but just create another folder here. OK, so everybody understands what we're trying to do. We want to get contacts with account information and with campaign information. So go to report types, please. All right, can everybody go to report type? OK, make it, make sure you take a second to read this information. All right, everybody got that? Then click on OK. And then what we'll do is we click on New. And the primary object, we want to start out with the camp uh, uh, contact, right? Because we are saying, hey, we want contacts, right? So the best thing in order for you to pick, you first write down what is its purpose. So I'll say I want contacts with Contacts with um, accounts with or without campaign, right? So if there are any campaigns associated, I want to get that information, right? So this basically tells you which is your primary object, which is your second object, and which is your third object. So that gives you an idea, right? Okay, contacts, okay. So contact is my primary object. Make sure the name is as descriptive as you like. And then where do you want to store it? I want to store it under accounts and contacts. OK, that way when people are searching, that's the category. So you have category and you have record types. 
and you have standard record types and custom record types and select deployed that means it's readily available if it's not deployed then the administrator have to go in and enable it okay all right when you make it deployed then the end customers once you finish this exercise anybody can now go and access this new report type okay i've never seen a mandatory description <laughs> Right. So that tells you that because, you know, if I just write something, if I just say contacts to here, right, there's nothing preventing me from writing a random label. But, you know, the whole purpose of the administrator's job is to enable users to use the information. Right. So that's why we want it. And end users also make reports. That's why it's important that we define what we're creating here. OK. All right, guys. So I'm going to click on next. Did everybody select deployed? Click on next. And the primary object is already selected contacts. The second object we wanted is accounts, right? So I'm going to search for accounts. Not seeing it. Accounts. Contacts doesn't have accounts. OK, so we can change the definition. Let's pick campaigns. Do we see campaign? Let's There's see campaign. campaign history. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's change the definition. I'm going to go back here. I'll, I'll figure out what, what is going on here. But let's say we want campaign uh, contacts with cases. With or without. Did it have activities, Kevin? Did you see that? Um. Yeah, with or without activities. Okay. So yeah, we can have that. activities. Okay. And then I'm going to save the definition. So I did basically a bunch of backtracking, but the idea is to show you just as a quick demonstration, right? Most of the time, you're not coming up with some random examples in a work environment. There's a very clear need, and then you go and investigate and then come up with answers. Okay. All right. So I'll store in the con. Um, there's nothing dedicated to contacts. That's probably why I don't see accounts. That's the other thing, Abhiram, right? If you notice in the category, there's, if you click on new report, the category, there's only one category for accounts and contacts. Okay, that's also possibly the reason. But then regardless, let's just go here. So we'll um, go to next. Okay, uh, what does it say? A report name can only contain underscores. So what I'll do is delete yeah. all of it and then click out and in. Yep. Yeah. Because yep. it fills it in automatically. Yep. So instead of campaign history, what I want to do is I want to associate it with campaign. No. Cases. Cases. I got cases here. And so what it's saying is each record A must at least uh, must have at least one record B. So we are talking about contacts with cases, but I can also say that hey, it may or may not have it. You see this relationship? So you can actually, this is called a Venn diagram, right? What it's saying is hey, if I select this, then I only want A's that also have B. But if I do this, I'm basically saying hey, I want A with or without B. Correct? Yeah. Cool. And then the third one is I want to indicate how B is related to C, right? So cases, and then maybe for these cases, let's say I have created an activity or I sent some emails related to the cases. So I have that. Yeah, go ahead. Somebody had a question? Click on each A that one. Yeah. And it gives you C, gives you two options. Yeah, because what it's saying is in the third scenario, right here, let's for a second remove this, right? Here, basically, what we're saying is I only want contacts that have cases, right? And now for those contacts and uh, that have cases, what do you want? You want activities. So then again, you can decide whether those activities should be exclusive or you know 
should they be exclusive? Meaning that means only a subset of these that, that also have a C or do you want it to be everything? Right? Okay. So right now I'm saying I want contacts with cases without, without activities, right? So I'm gonna go to previous and I'll change mine. I said I want contacts with cases with or without activities. So this is perfect, right? Does that make sense? If you wanted without without cases, you would do without without cases. But the moment you choose without without cases, then you no longer have the option of with here, yeah. right? Okay. Let's go to next and then click on save. Okay. Did everybody do that? Now we have established this, and it comes with some fields already. If you see here, contact has how many fields? Fifty-seven fields are selected. Cases thirty-one, activities thirty-five. You can also add additional pieces of information, and that's what we'll look at. Okay, give me one second. Actually, I had an even better example last time. Um, account opportunity activity owner. Okay, all right. I'll give that as an assignment that you can do on your own time. Yeah, I'll send you a snapshot of this report. In fact, let me do that right now. Okay, this is something you can do. I don't want to show my grouping and everything, but I want to show you the end result of the report. Okay, this is an exercise. You don't have to do it right now in this class, but I absolutely suggest that you do it after the class. Okay, either today or tomorrow before the class. Uh, how do I send a message? Okay. So this is your homework, Suzanne. Yeah. You asked, and you now have homework. Okay. So we are, this is a homework for another uh, record type. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and use the record type that we already have for now. So I have this. I can click on layout change. And when I do that, I can actually add more fields, right? So I already have these fields. I can add, if I want to add additional fields, I can do that. Did you, did you see this? This is 57, but I can go and look up more information. I can say, uh, I can pull details such as whether the account is active or not, what the account's billing address is, or what industry the account belongs to, right? I can get more and more information even out of the contact lookup field. I can get additional fields out of the contact lookup. Contact lookup can be okay, who does this person report to? Right? What is their role? Okay. Owner and others. Okay, so you can play with this. I want to just run through this now that there's no time. Okay. So is everybody clear what we're doing here? We're just creating a custom record a report type and I click on it. Okay, you can also click on preview layout. So it gives you an idea of, you know, all of the fees that are available in contacts, all the fees that are available in cases, all the fees that are available in um, activities. Right? So you get uh, three levels of information. Now I can go to reports, and when I click on a new report, I should be able to find what I was looking for. You see this here? Accounts. Without, without, oh, not this one. What was the one that we created called? Right? Okay. Yeah, accounts with cases with or without activities. That's the one I wanted. So I select that. And now I want contacts with cases. That's easy enough. So I have contact. This is my contact name. I got the full name of the contact, case number subject from contacts i can take um, contacts with cases contact contact id okay contact id and i want to pick case number so i have case number i want to just pick the bare minimum information right so contact id case number contact with case right and then with or without activities so i can search for activities Right? So I can add an activity ID. 
Of course, you can get more description or you can go here and you can pull a whole bunch of fields here. So for example, I want to get the email address of the contact. I can get the email address of the contact. I'll pick one from each field. Uh, cases, apart from the case ID, case number, I can get a case number. And for activity, apart from the activity ID, I can get, let's say, activity created date. Okay. And I can group information as needed. Right now, I don't have, I don't see any records. Either. I want to change it to all contacts. Are you guys working alongside me? So now that we created a report type, I'm creating a new report. Okay. I change the birth date to all time. Okay. Now, showing me records. You see here, every contact has a corresponding email. Now, if you try to filter for, let's say you try to filter for case ID, right? If you, you want to check, hey, are there any case IDs that are blank? So you can say case ID equals, and then yeah. you can just leave it blank. If you do that, you get no records because there's nothing with a case ID of blank. That's another trick you have to remember this, right? If you want to check if any of these records have blank case IDs, you'll see it. But if you want to check any of the contacts without a corresponding activity ID, as you can see, even in the preview, there are a whole bunch of records, right? I can do activity ID, right? I can say, hey, activity ID is blank. And then when I run the report, I only get blanks. So this report is contacts with cases without activities. And if I want to do the other way around, how do I do it? Okay, let's start with Shoba. So Shoba, I want a report where I have at least one activity for each contact. How do I do that? Maybe you can edit the activity. Sorry, say that again. You can edit the activity. How? Oh. Yeah. Um, mm, I... See, you first, I want to make sure you understand the question. So the question is, I want in this report only records where activity, activity ID is not blank. If activity, activity ID is blank, I don't want them in my report. Oh, then you can do it with the filters. Filter. Okay, I go to the filter and what do I do? Uh, activity ID. Yeah. Uh, if it is blank, uh, equals to maybe not blank. <laughs> not equals. Blank. Or not uh, equal to blank. The other way around also works. Abhiram, was that what you were saying as well? Yeah? All right, good job. All right, good, guys. So now we are saying, hey, activity ID is not equal to blank. Now, if I run it, then it will, it should only, oh, it's giving me both in this case also. Let's make sure my filter is correct. We are saying, hey, activity ID is not blank. Okay, we'll have to investigate this to see why it's not accepting activity IDs that are, they are saying, hey, activity ID is not blank, right? Okay, let me first save this report. Okay. Contact. I don't know how much you emphasized this earlier, but one reason why we always have case numbers is because we set it so we're only looking at contacts that have to have at least one case. Back when we were doing the, rec the report types. Right. It has so, to yeah. have a case. Right, it has to have a case. It can't That's not why. have one. Right. So was my filter looking for case? I was I'm looking for no. contacts that don't have an activity ID. Yeah. I don't know why it's not working. It should work. Right. So let me try to add created date, right? Because this is an activity created date. I want to make sure I'm picking the right one. So this is the activity created date. And activity created date is Not equal 
right here. Now if I show you. I'll I'll just double check what the query logic is. No. Okay, so that's um, wrong. Activity ID. Let me try to add the filter one more time. Activity ID. Activity ID is not equal to blank. In, in the preview itself, I would know whether this logic is working or not. For some reason, it's not working. All right, we'll, we'll get back to that. But that's the idea. So you can get information now from contact object, case object, activity object. And if activity has a lookup, you can get information from that. If case has a lookup, you can get information from that. Okay. All right. So. Now the next thing what I'm going to do is gonna close this report. OK, so the next piece of information we have about 10, 15 minutes. What I want to do is I want to cover another key topic and then I'll assign you a couple of uh, small. Um, tra uh, trail heads, so your modules that you can uh, explore. OK, so we know how to do a report type. Right, so if I want a simple report, so let, let me go back to my report builder and go to reports. Can everybody do that? Does everybody have a simple contact list report? Or a lead list, let's make it a simple lead list report. Can everybody do that? Okay, so go to reports and I want to just get lead and status information. So I'm going to make a new report. Can everybody work with me? So go to lead and I want a simple lead report. Nothing fancy, right? OK, and then uh, remember that there's a lead history also, but I'm going to ignore this for the time being because I want to teach you that concept. OK, so I have a lead report. Leads, that's a record type. OK, did everybody do this? Now you also know how to concatenate, but I'll just leave it as such. First name, last name, let's leave the email address. And then what I want to do is I want to get the status of the uh, lead. OK, all right, lead status. And then I want to get a date that's associated with not only created date, but when the lead status was updated. So let me go to all fields. Uh, the different date fields. OK, so I see a bounce date. I just see lead status, OK? And that's fine. So I have a lead status for the time being. Now, what I want to do is if I simply run this report, let me go to filters, make it all. Can everybody work with me, please? All leads and created date is all time. OK, setting the filters to all time should probably be the first step. Yep, because you are essentially clearing your filters when you do that. When you select all time and all leads, then you are saying, hey, I want everything. OK, so now go to outline. Right now, all I have is first name, last name, email and status. Is that what you guys have to you, and you remove your filters? Yep. OK. And then let's go ahead and save this report. And I'm going to say lead. I'm just going to call this lead status trend. Status trending report. Okay, that's what it is, the lead status trending report. I'll leave it in my private folder for the time being and save. OK, what I want to do is Every time the status changes or every week, I want to know what's happening to this uh, lead. Like, for example, Jeff was disqualified, right? But he didn't start out as disqualified, right? He was probably new and then became contracted and then eventually disqualified. So if you want to know the statuses of a lead, all you have to do is go to leads, open one of the lead records, right? You can open one of the lead records and it will give you the status, right? So new, contacted, educated, disqualified, this is your status, right? So I want to know when did this uh, 
record go from new to contacted. Every week, I want to get a picture of this lead, right? So that's called a snapshot. So we'll create a snapshot report. OK, now for us to create the snapshot report, we need to know a couple of things. One is we want to know what are some of our fields, right? What are some of our fields? And I actually wanted a lead status update field also, but that's tr uh, tracked in the lead history, right? That's tracked in the lead history object. So if you look here under lead, if I go to details, I have a last modified by, I don't see a history. Lead history, see this is where I can see the history, but that's a separate record type. Okay, so it will tell us when the, uh, this is for a campaign, but you can see when the status was updated, right? So similarly, if a lead status is updated, we should be able to see it. That's what we want to do. Okay, so I'm going to go to all open leads, open any of the lead, and I want to check, hey, what's its current status? What was its status over time, right? What was its status over time? How did its status change? That's what I want to understand, okay? All right, so for us to do that, we need two things. We need to simply take this information from the report, right? and create a custom object. So the way the snapshot works is it takes this records, put it in a table, okay? Next week, takes a copy of the rec records and puts them in the table again. So over time, you can see how this is trending. Does that make sense? So that's called a snapshot. So you can keep, take pictures. It's like, you know, if you go to, I'll just show you what I mean by snapshot. People who do weight loss programs or, you know, I've seen entire families do snapshots of their pictures. Um, one second. Oh, man. This when you want a report, you don't see it. The daily snapshots kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, how a person, or every year they take a picture, right? Baby growth. Let me try that. Watch me grow. Uh, One of those was in a ad once yeah. on TV. And this when you want pictures, picture right? Picture a day, yeah. Okay, see, that's a good skill to have. Pictures picture. every day, hair growth. <laughs> this is a good one. Shaved hair. this guy took pictures for a year. Mine would look very similar, except it runs backwards. Okay, so if we were to run this video in reverse, you'd get mine. Uh, but you, you get the idea, right? You're taking a picture every day. Similarly, you're taking a snapshot of the data every day and you need a place to store it. He stored it on YouTube or on his uh, laptop and then posted it into YouTube. So we need to do the same thing. So first we need a place to hold it and then we have to take pictures every day. OK, so we, our goal is to try and finish this in exactly 10 minutes. So first, what I want to do is I want to go in and create a custom object. OK. This is an important concept. OK, so I want to make sure you guys follow along. OK, so all I'm doing is just take a snapshot. So I'm going to click on create custom object. And I'm going to call this. Uh, what was our report about? A report was about a lead, so I'll say lead snapshot. Okay, are you guys with me so far? Yeah, so this is a yeah. lead 
snapshot. So I want to just take a picture of the. Okay, all right. So this is lead snapshots. All right, so we got all of that. Make sure you select allow reporting. I'll just go ahead and check all of these. Okay, it's in deployed, allow search add notes just i want to just add things to it but the most important piece is you want to make sure you allow reporting to the on that object okay all right so i'm gonna go ahead and save this and now all i need is just those four or five fields right so there's a camera oh there's one okay. alphabetical the blue one light blue Camera, cool. camera, camera, of course. Just needed to learn to spell it. That's all. Okay, lead snapshot object. Okay, now this is the object is lead snapshot. I'm making a tab uh, tab for it so I can actually see it. But now I don't care. I'm not going to change any of these. Let everybody have it, or I just remove this from everybody and only leave it in the. Uh, sales lightning. Uh, just go to tab and then make a tab. If you are. Uh, all right, so am I picking the right one, Kevin? I don't know. I just leave it on. You just leave everybody on. Just leave okay. it on everything. For now, OK. All right, let me go ahead and save it. But otherwise, I'm basically looking for sales standard lightning sales. That's basically what I'm looking for. OK, so I'm going to click on save. All right, so I got that. I'll just go ahead and add those four or five fields. OK, by now you guys are comfortable with the fields. So everybody knows what fields I want. First name, last name, email, lead status. I also want to put a couple of date fields. So that's what we'll do next. First name is a text field. Uh, or are these actually lookup relationships? Are these lookup relationships to the? Because aren't we matching a field from one object fr from another object? We we'll or... do that in a mapping. When when we do the snapshot design, that's where we do the mapping. But now I'll go with this approach, and if we need, I pick uh, text. Okay, I'll just say. First name, I'll just say, I put S underscore S uh, to indicate that this is a snapshot. Uh, label is 30, it's fine. All right. I don't want to make it required or anything. Go to next. I'll just leave the defaults. So I don't mess with any of that. Click save new. And next, what I want is again, that's the first name. Text. All right, Shobha, Jyotna, Susan, are you guys following along? Yeah. yeah. Last name underscore S. Length is 30. All right. Then I'll just go to next. Next. Seven. I got first name, last name. Then I need phone number. So I'll mark it as phone. Phone underscore next email. Email is also as you you'll notice it's a record type or, or a field type, right? So this is email underscore s. All right, so I got all four. Now I also want to put some date fields to it. OK, and if I miss something, I can always come back here, right? So let me add a new field here and I'll use a date field. Or, um, maybe even date time, you'll see. And then this is date changed. Oh, I needed the status field also, by the way, right? That's a text field too, so I'll come back to that. Date changed underscore S. Okay, go to next, next, save and new. And then the, I needed status field. 
right? Because that's one of the items I have, first name, last name, email. I didn't need phone number. Uh, and then the third, fourth, next one is lead status. So I'll make sure I include lead status. So lead status could be a pick list, but because we are copying, I'll just make it a text. Okay, so this is lead status underscore S. Uh, all right, so you got all of that. I'll go to next, next, save. Okay, so what fields do I have here? I have name, first name, last name, status, and then the date, date it was changed. Okay, phone is there, I don't need it. I can delete it or leave it, it doesn't matter. This will all be blank. Let me just go ahead and delete it. All right, so is everybody good with this? Yeah, I'll leave this open. So if you, in case you guys want to look at it. So next thing I want to do is go to my setup and search for snap. Okay, so I should see reporting snapshots. Can you guys go to reporting snapshots, please? All right, let me know. If you need information about the fields, the fields are right here, right? So, but I'll just take a snapshot of this and put it in the message so you guys can look at it if you need. All right, Suzanne, how's it going for you? Yeah, I'm in the snapshots. I can't hear you. Say that again. I'm in the snapshots. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Good job. Okay. So what did I do here? I went to set up search for reporting snapshots. Take a second to read it. What it's doing is it's taking your source report. In our case, what's our source report? Our source report is lead status. So make sure you save your report and at least run it once. Okay. Save your report and run it and know the name of your report. My name report is called lead status trending. Okay. Did everybody run save their report and run it at least once? All right, so I'm going to go to next so, and then I'll say new snapshot. And my snapshot is lead snapshot. I'll put my initials at the end just so I know what I'm doing. Oh, that's OK. Who's running this report? I'm the administrator who's running it. I'll just select me. If for some reason you're not able to find, just click on it and select the name. OK. So first thing is we are selecting a source. So our source report is called lead status trending report. Correct? This is our source report. What it does is it every day or every hour, depending on how quickly, like if it's a bank account and you want to keep history of how many transactions are happening in a day or a week, it might be a good idea to do this, right? So you do a snapshot. So I want to do lead status trending report, and then I want to post it into my custom object, which is called a lead status. Right? Do you remember this? This is my object. This is my custom object. So this is my source. Every day I take run the report, copy this into this object. That's all I'm doing. Right? When I'm doing that, then I need to take care of the mapping. Okay. Did everybody find their report and their custom object? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I just need first name, last name, email, and lead status. Okay, guys. So if you're done with this, I'm going to click on save and edit mapping. Okay, this is where you do it. So clone source. Okay, I, it looks like I can do some kind of a lookup too, but um, we can tackle it. So email, I have email field. One second. Yeah, I have an email field. Load no data. It will not load. Date changed date changed uh, is it execution time let me come back to that first name about this snapshot uh, for the report I think we should have left some more info in the report like the lead name yeah so first name last name first name last name lead status i get lead status here it's snapshot, lead snapshot name. Mm. Lead snapshot name. I'll just use the username. Okay. 
last few would I can skip, last reference I can skip. Day changed, uh, let's leave it as execution time. Okay, guys, couple of things, and we can test this out, refine it as needed. Okay, okay, go ahead, finish it. All right, so your date changed is your execution time, right? Uh, but this is when the report is actually running. It's technically not right, but that's because we didn't have a release that is change time here. Right? Okay, so email maps to email. This is our object, this is a target, this is a source. First name maps to first name, last name maps to last name. We don't need these two. We can leave them as uh, no lead, load no data. And then this is the name of the user, so you know it's running it. Okay. And then lead status is lead status. Okay. All right. So did everybody get this? I'm going to click on save. Did you guys get it, or you want me to take a snapshot and put it in the. I'll put it in the message for people to see it. Okay. All right, guys. So, are we good with this so far? I'm going to click on save. Right? If you miss a couple of fields, you can always come back and fix it. That's not a problem. I just want to test it. Okay. Now we found the source, found the target. We did the mapping. Is it, are we done? What is it, what is missing? Do we want it to be scheduled for daily? Exactly. We didn't say how how quickly, you know, how frequently we wanted the snapshot, right? So that's why there's no run history. There's no schedule. So click on edit here for the schedule and then you can say when do you want it? And do you want this report emailed to you? OK, I'm going to disable this. Otherwise, I'll keep getting those reports. I'll say daily. And I can say every weekday, every day, you can decide. You can also decide on the start times. So I'm going to select this. Uh, I don't know why it has the preferred start time of 3 a.m. That's fine. OK, so I'm going to run it for a month. You can change it, of course, right? So maybe I want to just run it for like three, four days. So I'll, I'll run it till the end of this month. OK, all right. So you can say, select your schedule depending on how frequently data changes for you. And who, who, if somebody needs to get a copy of the snapshot, they get a copy of the snapshot. For the time being, I'm going to select my name. All right, and then click on save. What happened here? Uh, preferred start time. Preferred start time, three o'clock. It's not even a required field, but okay. Now it says okay, it's going to run at three a.m. So you guys, when you wake up at three o'clock in the morning tomorrow, be sure to check your mailbox. Okay, all right, that's basically it. And then every day when it runs, you will see the run history. And if you go to that object, you can see the data. Okay, even if you don't have the front end, you can run a report on that object or you know how to create a front end, correct? You guys know how to create a front end for your object? Create the tabs create the field, the page layouts, and so forth. Yes? Yes. Yosna, Shoba. Yeah. Zan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you guys know how to do that. So you can even go to the front end and check it. Okay, so today it will be blank because there's no records, but tomorrow you should be able to see it. So tomorrow when you come in, I need two things. One is I need a snapshot of this report and also uh, what is the uh, progress you have made in your uh, trailhead for admin basics. OK, all right, Kevin, did you finish admin advanced or admin intermediate? I finished the intermediate. OK, it, OK, we can maybe think up on what topics uh, we are yet to cover in this conversation. OK, with respect to the syllabus. Can you do me a favor? You pretty much that you missed like one class so far, right? So can you just uh, look up the um, exam? Uh, topics and tell me which topics we did not cover so far so that way I can line those up for the next one week. Um, okay. Anything we want to revisit or yeah, just just you can you don't have to answer it right now, but just shoot me an email. Yeah. OK, really appreciate it. OK, all right. Is everybody good? So what are the two topics we covered today, Jotsna? You tell me one topic and I want Shobha to tell me the other topic. 
Report types. Report type. So report types are already there. What did we do with the report? Report type? snapshots. Report snapshot is the second one. So Shobha, what's the purpose of a report type? To know the progress. No, that's a snapshot. Report type. We, we created custom report types. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay, what was the reason we created a report type? If you want to combine objects, if you want to pull data from more than one object, as long as the objects have some relationships, we'll be able to pull them. Right? That's the purpose of a custom report, a custom report type. And then, uh, Kevin, what's the purpose of a snapshot? That's getting daily updates on whatever the report is looking at. Nice. And then, Suzanne, what is the assignment? What's the homework? Homework. Yeah, homework. I sent a picture of the report that I need you guys to do it tomorrow. Okay. Before the class. So tell me, what is this report about? What information is it pulling? Mm. It's uh, accounts. Yeah. And opportunities. What else? So it's merging accounts and opportunities. What else? Okay. If it's just accounts and opportunities, why do I see my name and Aditi's name here? Uh, with two different account users. Right. So, yeah. So, it's pulling from the user or the owner data, record owner. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you are the owner and then we also have the additional user. Exactly. Right. And it is pulling some activity information. That's the subject of the activity here. So we have oh. opportunities, activities, Activity. four objects, accounts, okay. and users. Okay. Right? So did everybody understand this? So I want you guys to try and build this report using a custom report type. Okay? Yeah. All right. Is everybody good? Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay. All right, we have exactly seven classes. I want to try and you know cover as many topics. And uh, my goal is for everybody in this uh, session to do two things: to finish uh, basic and intermediate administration course, okay, by seven days, um, and then be willing and eager to take the be eager and ready to take the admin exam. Okay, uh, Suzanne, can you go ahead and register? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, is everybody good? Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.